Lichens have been telling humans about air quality for over 200 years. My name is Diane Hoagland and I'm a lichenologist with the Alberta Biodiversity Monitoring Institute. The lichenologist is just a fancy word for somebody who studies lichens. They're important because they help us regulate our environment. Um, they tell us stories about the environment that would be really difficult to learn about otherwise. Uh, and they're really diverse. There's a few different ways you can use lichens to learn about air quality. One is you can go and look at the species that are present. And some species are very resilient and some species are very sensitive. So if you just go and spend a few hours and identify lichens, you can get a sense for how polluted that area is. The other way you can use lichens is you can actually take their bodies and you can take them to the lab and you can analyze the contents. And then you can tell directly like how much deposition through air or water or dust has been accumulating in that lichen. When we look at the lichens across Edmonton, we see a few areas we call lichen deserts. The downtown region and areas where that's more industrial, where basically there are only one or two species that can tolerate that tough of an environment. And then if we go down into the river valley, suddenly we get like a much more diverse and interesting and, and beautiful really lichen flora inhabiting those trees because there's higher humidity, the canopy is filtering out a lot of those pollutants. One of the most common lichens at Edmonton is the hooded sunburst lichen, or Xantho Mendoza phallax. It's a beautiful orange lichen, it lives really close to the bark, and if you just step outside your house in most Edmonton neighborhoods, you're gonna find it on your boulevard trees or your backyard apple tree. Another common lichen to learn, but it's a little bit more of a challenge to actually see it, it's quite cryptic, is called Pheophysia orbicularis, or the shadow lichen. And it's gray, again, really tightly uh, attached to the bark, um, but again, you're gonna find it all on the trees around your house. Now, if you're going a little bit further afield and you get to go down into the river valley, the next genus I would look at are Peltidras. And we don't really worry about species when you're starting to learn lichens, just stick at the pelt level. Um, they're challenged for even experienced lichenologists to get to species. And they're just fascinating. They're mysterious, they're misunderstood, they're underappreciated. You can tell a lot just by looking at the condition and the species of the lichens that are around you.